Good morning guys and welcome to Warsaw. Yes, today we're going to be taking you on an epic food tour of the city. We're going to start off with a pretty popular Polish street food called Zappy Kunki. As you can see, it is absolutely <laughs> freezing. It's forecast for snow, I think at what, <laughs> three o'clock today? Yep, it's minus two degrees right now. So we're going to brave the cold and take you around the city and hopefully eat some delicious Polish food. Let's do it. So I've just ordered the traditional zappi kanki. It's essentially an open-faced sandwich on a, well, a baguette. We've got the mushroom and cheese. Traditionally, they come, it comes with ketchup as well over the top. Here it is. So we went for the half size. They do do a longer one, which is obviously twice the size, but because we're eating a lot today, we've tried to keep it quite small. We went for the original. Like Christy said, it just has the sauteed mushrooms, the cheese, and we've got tomato sauce on the top or ketchup. You can see the cheese is really golden toasted and crispy. This is also from what I've read and heard. It's a perfect late night, like drinking food after you've been out on the beers. <laughs> this taste. Exactly like we call them at home cheesies, which is essentially just exactly this bread, cheese, and sauce, and then you put it under the grill in the oven. Yeah, it tastes exactly like that. The mushrooms just give it a really nice, like moist, soggy sort of bread, like between the two crunches of the cheese and the baguette. This is awesome. I can see why this is a perfect like late night drinking food and a very popular street food snack. I wish we got a full size one now. So I really don't want to give this to Christy. <laughs> I don't think you'll be saying that when you're full in about two hours. Maybe. One more bite. My turn to try the Zappi Kunky. So... It's awesome, isn't it? Perfect street food snack. Exactly what Steve said before. And you can also order pretty much whatever you like on them. It's kind of like a pizza menu where you can have ham, pineapple, different types of cheeses, vegetables. I'm gonna eat the butt of the sandwich because <laughs> it's always the crispiest and it's always the best bit with the most flavor. Delicious. That was the perfect way to start off this food tour. The Zappi Kanki come to 10 Polish Zlote, which was about $3.30 Australian. So pretty good. We're on to the next place. So I'm not going to bang on about the weather too much. As you can see, it is absolutely freezing and it has started to rain. But another thing that we've noticed about the Polish cities that we've been to, I don't know what they're yelling about. Um, I mean, we've only been to Wrocław and Krakow, but the streets here are pristine. They are so clean and neat and tidy. There's no trash anywhere. I think it gives Singapore a run for its money for sure. But yeah, just the streets in general are absolutely beautiful. So a lot of the buildings of Warsaw are relatively new as the city and a lot of the country was destroyed during World War II by the Nazi Germany. But the buildings, you would never know that, the buildings have kind of been restored to resemble what they were pre-war. And they, it's spectacular. It's such a beautiful, beautiful city. We thought Krakow was beautiful, but, and Wrocław, but this is just, we love Warsaw. I think it's our favorite Polish city. This is such a little inconspicuous doorway. Not really, actually, it's on the main street, but we walked past this so many times trying to find it. So we're gonna head in now and get our second and third street food dish for the day which isn't street food because this is a restaurant. So we're <laughs> going to sit down inside and get out of this cold. Close. So we've just placed our order. We came to this restaurant specifically for a sheep's cheese called Osipki. I had to ask the waiter how to pronounce that. So it's still probably wrong, but Os Osipki is the name of the sheep's cheese. And we also ordered some pierogi and coming into Christmas and the winter months here, so hot cider and hot mulled wine is very popular. So we've also one of, ordered one of those each too. So 
I'm excited to try this sheep's cheese. We've actually been trying to find it. Well, the whole time we were in Krakow, we tried to find it and we couldn't anywhere. So we're hoping that it lives up to the expectation that we have for it. The reason why the sheep cheese is special in Poland because you can only actually find it here in Poland. It originates from the, I think it's the Tatra mountain region in Poland. And it's made up from a salted sheep's cheese that is then put into a smoker that gives it its original smoky sort of flavor. Thank you. Thank you. <gasps> Thank you. Thank <Cheers>. you. <laughs> it is so difficult, and I was saying in Wrocław video that it is so difficult to pronounce these Polish words, and I'm sure we are butchering all of them, but even the word thank you, dziękuję, is hard to say. I don't know if it's because it's a native English tongue configuration thing, but anyway, this is my hot mulled wine. Let me try the cider first. I've had mulled wine quite a lot, so it's like a hot sangria. This is hot cider. It's got a lemon wedge and some cloves in there. Or maybe that's an orange. Yeah, I think it's orange. that's an orange with uh, some cloves. So it's very hot. I really like that. I think I actually probably prefer that than the wine actually. It is after midday, so don't judge us for drinking alcohol at this early on in the day. Is it after? Is it? I think it's lunchtime. It's like 12.01. We'll just say it is. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so it looks like this one's mine since Christy doesn't like it. No, well, I breathed it in, I inhaled it before I tasted it, so the alcohol fumes hit the back of my throat. So it's really nice. Um, the mulled wine that we've had over here in Poland is so much sweeter than any mulled wine we've had back home in Australia. They must add a lot of sugar to it. I reckon Steve is going to have the same reaction as me with the wine. Well, I don't think so because I saw that you breathed in okay. and I know right. that... We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> exactly. It tastes like there's a shot of vodka just in it. This is rocket fuel. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be pretty lit after this. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. These look unreal. These pierogies are massive. We went for the potato and cheese. We did in the first city we visited in Poland. We went out for dinner and got a mixed. I think we got meat, potato, and like spinach and ricotta. They were awesome. So I'm excited to stuck, um, get stuck into these. But I'm going to start with the sheep's cheese. Traditionally gets served with a cranberry sauce. And first impressions, it reminds me of halloumi cheese. Oh, kind of sounds squeaky as you're chewing it. It's got the texture of halloumi, but it's got a really nice smoky flavor. Cause it's cooked on a hot plate, it's really crispy. Like you can even see this one, it's got a really nice dark char on the edge. This is good, you're gonna like this. It tastes like smoky bacon and the sweetness of the cranberries really complement the smokiness and the saltiness of the cheese. This is a cracking dish mm -hmm. and you can actually buy this from the supermarket and you can chop it up and just cook it on a hot plate at home. Oh my god, that's amazing. I love that smoky flavour with the cranberry. Beautiful combination and it's just, yeah, really, really nice. I don't know if you would eat this as like a starter or like a breakfast or how do you eat this? Like what would you eat this? With or just for the sake of it? Let's eat it for the sake of it because it's so good. Okay, pierogi time. So these are probably the biggest pierogies I've ever seen in my life and they've got some onions and dill on the top. It's got a very strong smell of dill and I'm assuming that this is sour cream so I'm going to try it without the sour cream first. The pastry is really nice and thin. Whoop, got a little bit of that cranberry sauce on there from the, the <laughs> yeah, that's right. Ooh, that's kind of sweet as well. I think, um, yeah, it's cottage cheese and potato. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have a huge amount of flavor, but the dill and the onion, adds a really nice sort of yeah, mildness to it. I'm gonna try with some sour cream. Mm. The addition of sour cream makes it, I think. It's just, yeah, it just elevates everything and it just has this really nice, smooth and delicious taste. We love mm -hmm. any kind of dumplings, any type of progies. Mm -hmm. Yep, these are really good. And you can really tell that they're so, that they're authentic and handmade by their 
well, ginormous shape and the irregular pattern. So definitely a fan and they're very tender. Some pastry can be a little bit tough and not chewy, but this is just melts in your mouth. Very good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, strong. I thought I was exaggerating. Yeah, I wasn't, was I? You caught me off guard then. Another awesome, delicious meal here. That was 120 zloty, so about 40 Australian dollars. Not too bad, including the wine. And the Ossipi was by far the star of the show. That was absolutely delicious. And I'm so glad we tried it here because it was, I couldn't imagine it tasting any better, but we're on to the next place. It is starting to come down a little bit harder. It's not quite snowing yet. We're still holding out hope. So I think we might walk to the next place or yeah, we're gonna walk. The next place we're heading off to is called a milk bar. And these were created back in the late 19th century for the people to come grab a good, affordable local meal. And back then there was over 40,000 of these restaurants spread over the whole of Poland. But nowadays they're a little bit rarer than there's only about, I think 140 of them left over Poland. Completely different style of milk bar to what we're used to back home. Back in Australia, milk bars are kind of like your little corner suburban convenience stores a lot of those have kind of phased out as well but there are still a few around where you go and get like lollies or milk um, drinks and things like that so yeah completely different milk bar to what we're used to and the milk bars here are very simple restaurants kind yep. of set out like a cafeteria and a lot of them are actually self-serve where you just grab the food you want we did go to one in Krakow we might insert some of the footage because the food there was phenomenal it was so tasty so yep. we might insert some of the footage but um, at the moment we're walking there through the beautiful Ograd Saski which I think means Saskia Gardens or Saskia Park in Polish but it is oh, it's stunning I love the colors it's just after autumn so the leaves are covering the ground So the first milk bar that we went to, the line was massive, nearly out the door. So we're heading about 400 meters around the corner and we've got a backup milk bar. <laughs> we do. We've got about four milk bar backups because we have heard that they get very busy. It's just after lunch. It's kind of like two o'clock. So people must eat a late lunch here. Trusted me this massive plate of food and drink. So this place is a little bit more modern than the other milk bars that we've been in. So we've actually ordered at the front on a TV screen and then picked it up from the counter once it was ready. But this is what we ordered. I ordered the potato pancakes and sour cream and the golubki, which is a meat stuffed cabbage roll. We did have these in Krakow, but it had a mushroom sauce. So I wanted to try it with the tomato based sauce. I got a, it just said warm tea on there. So I think it's just like a black tea with fruit in it. And also one of these drinks. <laughs> we already had a sip of it. It kind of tastes like water with, it's not very carbonated. It kind of tastes like a really weak cordial. We also like, don't know if it's alcoholic or not. Yeah, we don't know if it's alcoholic or not, and we I don't think it is. So I'm going to start first with the potato pancakes. So these are popular all over the country. People love these. Everyone has their own like home style recipe, but the main ingredients are potato, onion, flour and egg. You can order them with all sorts of different sauces. I think we've had them before with mushroom sauce. This time we got sour cream. We don't also don't have a knife, so I'm trying to cut with a spoon. <laughs> Very simple, it's a very tasty deep fried dish. I think it's deep fried, it looks deep fried. And everything, I think we've said before, everything that's fried makes it 10 times better. Is it crispy or a bit soggy? Really, so really crispy on the outside, but it's got a silky smooth texture. Like a hash brown or a, like a potato rosti from home it has a, like a stringy, like grated potato. I think this looks more mashed than grated. 
I'm also doing this without a knife. So the soup is, I thought it would be like a little bit thicker in consistency. It's not, it's like a soup. So I might actually get a spoon to try that so I can scoop up all the tomato -y goodness. And I've got a huge peppercorn in there, which I'm not going to eat. Mm. It's stone cold. What the soup's called? I'm not sure if this dish is supposed to be cold. The one we had in Krakow was piping hot. It's really nice. The flavors are delicious. It's like meat, rice, some herbs. I'm not sure what the meat is. I think it is a pork. It's definitely like a light meat wrapped in a cabbage roll. And it's definitely a tomato soup. I really like it. I really wish it was hot though, because it kind of tastes a little bit funny cold, but. Also, with it being freezing cold outside, it's sort of one of nice mm. like soup to eat. I really like the flavours though. Yeah, it's nice. The pancakes are definitely fried, and at one downside, they're super oily. And even though your cabbage roll was cold, <laughs> I smashed that. That was really nice. I loved it. I do. I was gonna say I prefer it with the mushroom sauce, but I don't know. I kind of like the tomato soup. It's different, and I like both of them. I love this drink too. Soda. I love it. I don't. I wouldn't call it a soda. I really wish I knew what at least one word says. Everyone from Australia, it tastes like a yellow super duper, but obviously melted. It's that last little bit of icy pole at the end of your super duper. <laughs> So we can definitely see why the milk bars these days are still super popular. Really affordable, really traditional, like home cooked style food, delicious. That came to a total of 38 zloty, Polish zloty, which was about 14 Australian dollars. So such good value. All right, so we're gonna catch a tram, head back to our hotel or our Airbnb. We've got two more stops for the day. We're getting pretty full. So luckily one of those stops is a drink and then the last one's a dessert. I just have to quickly mention that it is so cold. It's minus four degrees and my cognitive abilities are slowly declining. <laughs> I'm hearing things. I swear I just heard weird things before and Steve was talking to me and I didn't know what he was talking about or saying. Why I couldn't um, concentrate because I'm so cold. Just thought I'd add that little bit of useless information for you. So this bar is called Piana Vishnia. It's a cherry liqueur. I was gonna say cherry cola, cherry liqueur. It's so good. It smells good. Yeah. We've stopped in and grabbed a glass of Vishniak, I think it's called, and it's a cherry liqueur made by soaking cherries in vodka with a little bit of sugar and you can get it hot or cold. We've obviously went for the hot or the warm version because like we've said a hundred times, it's freezing outside. Oh, it smells very strong. I know Christy's not gonna like this because she hates cherry flavored things and she hates pretty much straight alcohol. And I'm pretty sure this is straight alcohol, 17% proof. I've also seen it referred to as cherry cordial. So they might dilute it, but it definitely doesn't smell like it's diluted. I'm gonna give them a taste. Well, that's really nice. Is it really? Yeah, it because it's hot. Like the other hot drinks we got at lunchtime, you get that alcohol like hit at the back of your throat. But once you like swallow, you just get that nice warm cherry. You can't even taste the alcohol at all. It's not that sweet either. I really like this. I can see why this is really popular here. Also, if you're wondering why Steve is a lovely shade of red to match his drink. It's a massive chandelier. <laughs> Do you reckon I'm not gonna like it? All right, I'm interested. I don't know. Let's swap. You might like it. As Steve mentioned, that I do not like cherry anything. So, um, this is going to be oh, interesting. It smells like marzipan. Oh yeah, you hate marzipan. Not like marzipan. Oh. I like it. What does? <laughs> you like it. My face doesn't look like it. Once you get over that first initial, like, strong alcohol flavour. 
Oh, hang on. I don't, okay, I don't like it, but I don't hate it, if that makes sense. It's, it's okay. I probably wouldn't drink this. I'm gonna give it to Steve, but it's not bad. Those red lights are playing tricks on my eyes. <laughs> I can't, um, everything I'm seeing is like a shade of rose. So that was for a small glass, 22 Zloty, yep. which is how much Australian? About eight Australian dollars. So not too bad. But the next stop is just down the road and we're going to get a little bit of dessert. The best time, dessert time. Also, the sun sets here at about 3.45 p.m. and it's, I think, is it sun this is a sunset? Yeah, it's quite dark. Like, it looks probably quite bright on the camera. Look at those trees. But it's pretty... So as I was saying before, Christy got excited with the colourful trees. <laughs> the camera makes it look quite light right now, but the d sun has completely set and it's what, about four o'clock? It's not even four o'clock yet. Yeah, it gets dark very early here. All right, so final stop for the day, always the best part. We have this guy here. And I tried to order it as per the menu, Roka Zibita Shmitana. I know that's completely incorrect, but it is a, I think it's a wafer or like a waffle sort of cone kind of thing. And I think it's filled with cream. I'm gonna give it a go. It's like a cigar. good it's an unsweetened cream so there's no sugar in that and it tastes exactly like a waffle cone that ends about to drop out <laughs> mm. I like nice. that. it's really light the cream's really fluffy the waffle cone's really fresh and crispy not overly sweet yeah i really like that i could eat mm. so many of those though <laughs> we should have got two really nice light dessert yeah I thought that they were a lot bigger. They were only for uh, Zlovki, so maybe like a dollar thirty Australian each. We should have got more. So that was the perfect way to finish off a food vlog. I don't even feel sick or overly <laughs> full or anything like that, Which like we usually we do. We normally do when we do a food vlog. We, we normally do. eat way too much, but I think yeah. today that was a perfect amount of food. Yeah, everything was light, and we kind of just like nibbled on things. So yeah, worked out. So we. Perfect. And this is our final stop in Poland. We have absolutely loved this country. We started off in Wroclaw, we went to Krakow with a day trip to Auschwitz and finally finishing off in the capital city. So we love it. We'll definitely be back. We wish we timed it for the Christmas markets. Yeah. Maybe next year. <laughs> but we're off to the Baltic countries next. So stick around if you want to see what we get up to and we head up further to the Arctic Circle. So that should be awesome. All right, see you next time. It's the next morning. We didn't get any snow yesterday, but look at it now. It is crazy. It's sweet. These leaves on the ground yesterday were all the autumn colors. So the browns and the oranges, and now it's just like a blanket of white. It's so beautiful and we're so excited. It's been snowing all morning and then it's going to stop during the day and it starts snowing again Sunday. Yep. So we're pretty excited to see snow. We are. We were holding out a hope that we're going to see snow here in Poland and it has delivered. <laughs> so we're pretty happy. It hurts when it goes in your eye, which <laughs> I didn't ever... You need an, um, you need an umbrella. Yeah. We got up so early. We kept checking the weather last night and I got up about 7 o'clock this morning and it was just... Well, pretty much like this, so I woke Steve up and we quickly got ready to come down because we didn't know how long it was going to last for. <laughs> this is the most epic way to finish off a country. I, I, I'm, I don't even have any words. I'm so excited and happy. 